morning, Glassboro. And welcome to this morning's news. I'm Matt Bowman. And I'm Katie Klein. Rowan University had a lead problem in their water in the beginning of a school year, and the school is now preventing future incidents and installed lead filters in several residence halls during spring break. Every residence hall besides Holly Point Commons, Whitney Center, and Rowan Boulevard apartments have had faucet filters installed. According to Rowan University spokesman Joe Cardona, the filters installed will remove 99% of lead. The filters are changeable, and papers will be distributed to educate students on how to change the lead filters. In residence halls where multiple people share a bathroom, housekeeping will be responsible for changing the filters. But for people living in an apartment, they are responsible for changing their own filters. In addition to the water filters, 31 water bottle filling stations will be installed on Rowan's campus, and bottled water will continue to be given out to students. Rowan also wants to remind students that EPA guidelines say that it is best to run water for at least 30 seconds before use. Are you tired of struggling to find a decent parking spot on campus? Well, fret no more. Rowan University has set in motion a plan to expand their pre-existing parking lots and increase their parking garages significantly. The parking lots located near James Hall and Route 322 will receive around 1,000 new spots each, while the parking garages located near the Rowan University residential townhouses and apartment complexes will receive an additional two levels, resulting in 500 spots each. The construction of the new additions will begin promptly after this current school year and is estimated to be completed by early 2018. We now go live to Lou in the streets for more. I try to avoid parking as much as, much as I can because it is so hard to not get ticketed and uh, there's actually never any spaces available either and it's it's like why would I even walk that far when I could just walk from my off-campus house. The parking situation here at Rome is terrible and they continue to use their parking lots and make the situation even worse. I don't think this is making things worse. I mean it's good for that matter but then there's nowhere else to go and the fact that you can only park in certain student parking lots not employee parking lots I just there seems like there's so many parking lots but no spots available and I just think it's really either create more parking or uh, maybe make it less strict as far as the, uh, the ticketing goes. I walk more, I don't really commute, um, so, and I think it's a very far walk. I have to walk from Robo to James Hall. So. You, gotta, you gotta start accepting less students. Lucky for these students, university officials are taking initiative that could be effective as early as fall 2017. Let's go to Morgan Trudell, who takes us inside the newest project involving Camden's Riverfront State Prison. Riverfront State Prison of Camden, New Jersey is soon to be a beautiful green waterfront park. With the help from the Grow New Jersey program, the city now has the money to transform this abandoned prison into brand new housing, retail, commercial development, and a four-acre sightseeing park. Economic Development Authority President Tim Lizera says the project will take time and will not be easy, but the great interest in the area is encouraging. On the opposite end of the state, reform is also underway. Five years after the devastating damage from Hurricane Sandy, Seaside Heights has finally replaced the infamous Jetstar roller coaster. The rides replacing the Jetstar is a green and blue looped seven-story drop roller coaster and a brand new 131-foot Ferris wheel. The roller coaster Hydras and the Ferris wheel are, accepted, are expected to open early next month at the start of the new summer season. In other news, a man's best friend became a hero in Jackson, New Jersey on Wednesday, March 8th. It was 3 a.m. and Jim Zimmerla was woken up by his dog Marley jumping on his bed to warn his owner of a fire. A br with bright fire blocking almost all his exits, Zimmerla grabbed Marley and both climbed out the bedroom window. Zimmerla was fast asleep with his hearing aids out and claims if it wasn't for his best friend Marley, he wouldn't be alive today. And now, back to Matt. Are you or someone you know suffering from hunger or lack of food and nutrition on campus? Well, that issue will soon be resolved. Rowan University students Rebray Singleton and Daniel Cardona created The Shop, or Students Helping Other Profs, in order to provide food and health products to those in need. Cardona, president of the Student Government Association, has voted in February to provide $30,000 to start The Shop. Cardona says, quote, It's hard to hear that someone in your family is hungry, Food insecurity is all around us, and it's nameless and faceless. 
The shop opens its doors on March 23rd at 1230 p.m. and can be found in room 141 of Building 5 in the Rowan Boulevard Apartments. We don't want to see college students go hungry. You love to see our university giving the students better, affordable options. In other news, the Pinelands Pipeline crisis has divided South Jerseyans. We take a closer look to Friday night's hearing from Cherry Hill. Hundreds attended a New Jersey Pinelands Commission meeting Friday, mostly against the 22-mile gas pipeline through some of the protected forest. South Jersey Gas applied for the project, which they say would provide a backup gas supply to the Jersey Shore and allow for the BL England power plant in Cape May County to convert from burning oil and coal to natural gas. They're, they're listening to a gas company that's concerned about their profits. The debate pits environmentalists against those who want jobs and economic growth. We support the pipeline. It's going to create a lot of jobs. It's the cleanest technology that's available to us now in a demanding need for energy. When it was time to decide, you couldn't hear the voting over the persistent chance. But as the crowd learned that the tally was nine in favor of the pipeline, five against and one abstention, the anger was unmistakable. History. Environmental groups, including the Pinelands Preservation Alliance, plan to file a lawsuit next week. We'll be appealing on the merits of the decision today, on the merits of whether this project meets the Pinelands regulations, which we think it very clearly does not. Despite the hostile response from the protesters, the 9 to 5 vote allows the pipeline to be active immediately. Now let's see what Alicia has for our target weather. Friday through next Wednesday, will not be showing temperatures above the lower 40s. Tuesday will bring about more wintry precipitation with a mixture of rain and ice. Drivers should err on the side of caution as road conditions on these days will be slick. But temp temperatures will start to make a climb again starting on Thursday and will stay in the low to mid 50s until next Tuesday. But be sure to dress to stay dry. Rain showers are expected to begin on Friday and continue through Wednesday into Thursday. I guess we'll just have to do a rain dance to keep the sun out. Thanks, Alicia. I would pay to see that. Or maybe I could just wear my raincoat and boots. Well, on that note, I'm Katie Klein, and that was Matt Bowman. Have a good morning, Glassboro, and a great rest of your day.